Welcome, my brother and my sister. This is Promised Land Proclamations with your sister, daughter of Judah. Just because you have grown immune to their venom doesn't mean you should play with snakes. Is sage advice and the topic of our discussion today. The snakes I'm referencing are the venomous people in your life who, like a traditional snake, occasionally use their venom to defend themselves but are rarely eager to strike just anyone, choosing instead to save their venom for their prey. Just as a snake sheds its skin, so too do these wicked people put on a new cloak, pretending to be something they are not, lying in wait to pierce you. The first mention of a snake in the Bible is in Genesis and the deception he used on his prey, Eve. It is an allegorical story best understood by reviewing the video series on this channel titled The History of You. But suffice it to say, the enemy of humanity is described as a reptile in form, and you will often see those same characteristics in your family, friends, and acquaintances, sneakily lying in wait to harm others around them. <coughs> Excuse me. These individuals carry the Leviathan spirit, an evil spirit that is prevalent in the families of the earth today. Jesus the Christ spoke often of the authority of believers to trample serpents and scorpions, and he was speaking of these very venomous spirits that have overtaken so many individuals. Snakes have no limbs, no movable eyelids, and no ear openings, which are physical attributes. The spiritual equivalent is that these snake-like people have no ear openings. They are unable to hear the voice of God. They have no spiritual eyelids, which are likened unto scales that can be removed so they can see in the spirit. In the scriptures, the serpent is exposed as a deceptive creature, a trickster who promotes as good what God has forbidden and shows cunning in its deception. So too are these snake-like individuals in your life. You must use wisdom. These snakes want access to you so they can have access to your loved ones. It is your job to test every spirit. That means to test the character and intentions of any person coming towards you. You have done well to remove these sneaky, poisonous people from your life, and you have allowed Yahweh to heal you of the bites you received of them. Many of these manipulators were in your life simply because you have a good heart and did not dismiss them the very minute you saw their true character. Some you allowed to stay well past their welcome date due to proximity. They are relatives, children of your siblings, cousins, or in some way related to your bloodline. Some of you have not entirely dismissed the snakes in your life, and if you have hesitated, please remember. Please remember that he who hesitates is lost. For those of you who have been healed and are now walking in your calling and purpose, surrendered to God, you may have found that these people have continued to try to reach out to you, and you may be unaware as you have blocked access through all channels. But maybe a message got through, and you have been pondering whether to respond. This word is for you. Just because you have grown immune to the venom does not mean you should play with snakes. Continue to pray that God deliver them from deceit, manipulation, cruelty, the Jezebel spirit, hate, anger, greed, frustration, and all other manner of wicked spirits. But use wisdom. You have authority to trample those serpents. And we war in the spirit, not in the flesh. We must always be sober and watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Your adversary will always use those closest to you, your relatives. You must remember that you don't owe anyone anything but your prayers and well wishes. No one has a right to connect with you or to be part of your inner circle, especially those who have been revealed to have, a, to have wicked, manipulative hearts. I'm being led to say that again. You must remember, my brother and sister, that you don't owe anyone anything but your prayers and well wishes. No one has a right to connect with you or to be a part of your inner circle, especially those who have been revealed to have wicked, manipulative hearts. Opening doors to unrepentant folks is just a way to get bitten by them. And you're wiser now. You have been brought to a place where you are celebrated, not just tolerated. And why invite a snake to dine with you? If nothing else, you owe it to your loved ones to protect them from these Leviathan spirits. Hello, welcome, my brother and sister. I've been led here by the Lord to bring this word to you. Many in this hour are pondering about these, these connections with these relatives. And while we have prayed for full restoration for our families and deliverance from these Leviathan spirits, you are very aware of who still carries these spirits. 
who is lying in wait to bite and pierce the members of the family. And you have a duty to protect your loved ones, to keep them away from these liars, the deceitful ones. The Leviathan spirit I speak of is a very powerful spirit. And it takes great fasting and prayer and spiritual warfare to remove it from yourself and to remove any connection to it. And of course, we are grateful to these individuals because they pushed us into our destiny. They pushed us to pray more. They, they, they pushed us by their wickedness, their wicked behavior, their lies and their deceit is what pushed us straight into the Father's arm and led us straight into our destiny, right? Took us to our destiny helpers, led us to the exact place that God wants us to be. And if you're not quite there yet, you're on your way. But this is a reminder that this is the season where many people will try to connect back with you as they see what God is doing in your life, as they see that you've been delivered. Remember, their goal, because they carry this wicked Leviathan spirit, they haven't repented, they're not walking in covenant with God, they're liars, they will try to contact you, either through social media, through messages, um, I believe it's called DM, I'm not sure, these private messaging groups. Um, I myself do not have a Facebook, I have very little social media, and um, but they may try to email you, and you've already had them blocked, so they cannot contact you on your phone, and that's in obedience to Yahweh, God has told you to block them. Remember what Jesus Christ said to to his betrayer, right? Judas is Iscariot. What does he say? He says, do what you're doing quickly. Do it quickly. Pull that band-aid off. Go on in and, and, and do what you're going to do. Go on and betray me because it's going to lead me into my purpose, right? He could see the betrayer. It has been it had been revealed to him. And it's been revealed to you through prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord. And, and as you've learned to test the spirits. Remember, the Bible tells us to test every spirit. That's what we have been told. We've been taught to do that. And many of these people were in our life. And they, and they pretended Christianity, right? They pretended to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, we we saw as time went on that that's not, that's not who they were. They were not serving Jesus. They were working for the wicked one. And many of these people don't even know that they're working for the devil because there's no one in their immediate family who has corrected them. So, of course, this has gone on for quite a season. And many of the believers in the body of Christ, you have such good hearts. You know, God has really given you this heart of love for people and because you wouldn't treat people poorly and you wouldn't wouldn't do these things to people and you just wouldn't hurt them intentionally you, you know you don't carry the leviathan spirit you don't carry these wicked spirits and so it's been very difficult to discern but of course god intended it for it to happen because we were going to a season when we were going to be seated in 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 places very different places than we grew up in right we're around different people and we have had to learn to discern to tell the difference between different types of spirits. What is the character of this person to pray and seek and ask God to reveal it? And, you know, I love that saying of don't fool around with spiritual people because the Holy Spirit will tell them all your business. And that's the truth. Once you started praying for these people and seeking God, he showed you this Leviathan spirit within families. A lot of times it's on mothers and daughters. And so a lot of your nieces will have it. Nephews will have it. You know, not just female, it's male too. These nieces and nephews will have the same generational curses and they haven't been able to break it. Their mother hasn't been able to break it. And because they're refusing to surrender to the living God, they th these wicked activities, they, they can't break it. Because the chains can only be broken by Jesus Christ, right? And so, of course, these people pretend to be believers on Jesus. But remember that light and darkness cannot share together. You know, how can Christ, remember the scriptures say, how can Christ and Belial, the devil, have any agreement, right? What can a believer have together with a non-believer? The temple of God cannot have any agreement with idols, and we are the temple of living God. And so for many times, these people have been idols, right, in our lives. Maybe they've been siblings, aunts, cousins, nieces, nephews, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter their relation, but they're usually close because these are familial family spirits right these are inherited generational curses inherited evil patterns so these nieces and nephews siblings whatever they've learned these things from their aunts their uncles their parents and they have no other idea how to act because they received the leviathan spirit from in at birth from their mother from their fathers these generational curses and they've inherited it and so once they were uncovered and and you can see right through them they're coming back now. They want to come back. They want to connect with you and pretend that they haven't done these wicked things. Matter of fact, when they go to contact you, they'll pretend as though they're just trying to reach out to be of assistance. And they'll, they'll generally these people will have uh, 
very they're very pretentious and they pretend very very well they they carry a manipulative spirit one of the key traits of that leviathan devil spirit is manipulation and of course remember the scriptures say that the children of darkness are much more cunning and subtle than the children of light we're the children of the living god so we are you know we're not cunning we're not sneaking around like these snakes you know how a snake it sneaks it slithers and it sneakily you know waits to attack its prey right and that's exactly what these characters have done and due to their close proximity of bloodline they have gotten away with it for years and years and years and of course their parents have never called them out. Their siblings have never called them out. There aren't any Christ believers around them. There's no followers of Jesus Christ to correct them. Because remember in the scriptures that tells us we're not to correct without. And that means the people outside the church that don't claim Christ. Now, you do have street preachers. But for us, the believers in Christ, we they, God will deal with them. God will judge them. But we ourselves are to judge the fruit and the character of the people who say they are, they are in the body of Christ. The Bible says, do you not know? You will judge angels how much more the things of this life and that means the people that are saying that they have jesus but every action that they take is not you know they're snake-like and so all this leviathan spirit jesus christ spoke many times in the bible about serpents and snakes scorpions stinging things right things that sting they pierce because these people have pierced your heart they hurt you and then god came in and he healed you you know these people told wicked lies cheated stole many of them are thieves they're greedy They've been given much, but they still want more, just self-centered. And they, they try to connect with you over pretended alliance or love. But of course, there's no love in them. There's no love in any action that they've taken. And they're uncovered as workers of iniquity, working for the dark one, right? These cunning people, subtle cunningness. And so thank you, Jesus, that we had them in our life, that we got exposed to them. And that it taught us now to check the fruit of everyone, right? And so um, Alan and I are so grateful. And Sunny Bunny, too. It's just so wonderful because this lesson was a rough one. And I, and I encourage you, my brother and sister, to understand that the lesson is there for a purpose. And it was to teach us that not all that come saying, you know, Lord, Lord, belong to him. Just like he says, many are going to go on that day, the day that he returns and say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We've cast out demons. And Jesus the Christ is going to say to them, go away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And you can tell by their fruit they don't know Christ. They don't have love. They don't have forgiveness. They don't ask for forgiveness. They don't repent. They don't go back and correct the things that they've done. None of their fruit is good. It's all bad, rotten fruit. And, of course, now either either they're contacting you under the lie of attempted help or pretending, not knowing that God is your sustainer, he's your provider, you know, He's the rock of Gibraltar. He's the one taking care of you. And they don't understand that they've been uncovered. So they, they're, they, just like, just like he said, snakes, they shed their skin. They get new skin. And so these people have put on different cloaks, pretending to be different people. So use wisdom because the enemy is always seeking whom he may devour. And, and, and what, what the enemy wants to do is to try to rob your joy, your peace, your love, your happiness, your calling and your purpose. You know, we're called to serve others on the planet. And if you're if you're laying around broken, abused, dis broke, busted and disgusted, hurt, angry, feeling some kind of way because you got bit by these snakes. Right. That were supposed to love you. Then how can God use you? So God, God has healed his children. You know, he's in the process of healing. Either you're being healed and he's using these words to heal you or you've already been healed. And so this is what angers these spirits. Oftentimes they want to come up and connect with you because they want to steal. They want to steal what God has in, put, placed inside of you. They can't, of course, because the devil's a defeated foe. And you have to love the way our Father in Heaven works because he's exposed them by allowing them to work this iniquity. Remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment of you, you shall condemn. Because this is your heritage, right? This is your heritage. And it, it is the heritage of the servants of God. And our righteousness of it is of him. That's what he says in Isaiah. Our righteousness is of him. So these people in their wicked acts, they are actually taking, they're attacking the Holy Spirit of living God within you, trying to steal it. Why? Jealousy, envying, strifes, seditions, angry. They're angry because they're not walking in covenant with God. And so because they haven't fully surrendered to Christ, they cannot find their true purpose and calling. So they're confused, angry, upset, and they don't know they don't understand that they can't win. So that angers them as well. Just like the enemy, the devil. 
Satan, the great dragon. He continues to attack, but he's defeated. Remember, Jesus Christ holds the keys to sin, death, and hell. And so these people want you to react in anger. They don't understand you're healed and you're walking in perfect peace with Christ. You have a sound mind and you're walking in covenant with Jesus Christ. He's your best friend. He loves on you and he exposes these people. And so this is a beautiful, glorious thing. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. And so remember, my brother and my sister, just because you've grown immune to the venom does not mean you should play with snakes. You must seek the Lord Jesus Christ on every relationship and ask if he has sent the person. Ask if he is allowing them to come back into your life. Oftentimes he can remove, he will remove people for a season and then allow them back in. Uh, many times he doesn't allow people back in ever, but you will know people by their fruit. And if they're unrepentant and they haven't even come at you right and apologized and corrected and, you know, and went, went and confessed all the lies they told, <coughs> excuse me, if they haven't even done that, then you know that's not the Holy Spirit of the living God operating in them because you know God requires repentance. So it's very easy to see who they are. So be very careful because your enemy is seeking whom he may devour. And what he wants to devour is your hope and your peace and your trust and your happiness and your joy and all the things that you're carrying for the kingdom of God. Because remember, as children of God, we are pulling down the kingdom of God to earth through in and through us. We carry the kingdom of God within us. And so our love and compassion and um, works that we are doing for the kingdom because we want to, because God has placed it on our heart. These individuals are trying to stop you by hurting you. They tried to break you. And so now they're angry, very angry that it didn't work. And also they're suffering the consequences of their sin. So remember, whatever you reap, you, you, you will, whatever, whatever, excuse me, thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you plant, that's the harvest you're going to have, right? That's what that's literally saying. So these people have planted strife and ugly, ugly things. And so now they're reaping that. And some of them are aware that they are being attacked and that they're, the world calls it karma, but really it's the just of Christ, right? God takes care of his own. He tells people not to touch his prophets and his anointed. Who's his anointed? Anyone who has received the spirit of Christ, okay? They are anointed with righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So these individuals are worried because they can see some things in their life not going right. And they're not, they, some of them, some of, thank you, Holy Spirit, some of the people in your life do know it's because they came up against you and attacked you and they're very angry. So they've vowed to take you down. And that could be by very much by literal murder with their mouth. They, they have decided it's you or them. And so they have worked witchcraft and all kind of crazy, wicked things, voodoo. And, and they, they're being paid back double for their trouble. So God has saw it all. He used that time to strengthen you, and now these people are getting exactly what they deserve. Whatever you sow on this earth, you shall reap. If you sow love, you'll reap love. If you sow hate, you'll reap, you'll reap hate. A bittering and strife, these people are very bitter because you escaped. Not only are they angry because you escaped their grasp, and that Jesus Christ covered you in the blood, and that you didn't go down, they're also angry because now they have to answer to the devil, Belial. Satan, because they allowed you to, you escaped. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, they, from the devil's perspective, they work for him and you escaped their grasp. You didn't go down. Now it's not due to anything you did. It's, it's simply by the grace and mercy of God. God stepped in and fought your battles because one with God is majority. And so these people are not only suffering the wrath of God, they're also suffering the evil that the devil has planned for them. And the facts of the laws of the universe. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. If you're a liar, people will lie to you. If you're a cheat, people will cheat you. If you're a murderer, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. If you are filled with anger, you will receive anger. If you're filled with love and peace and a sound mind and goodness, and you continue to bless others in whatever way, God is going to bless you. And you will see it in your lifetime. And you will see it as the psalmist said, as the David psalmist said. You will see it in the land of the living. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. And so what you're seeing now is these snakes trying to creep back in. Just like a snake, they're slithering around. They've got their fangs out and you are their prey. And they're, of course, these people are very, very deceived by Satan. And so they think that they will be allowed back in. But remember that God removes people for a purpose. And even though you've forgiven them, that does not mean that they will be ever allowed back into your inner circle. Only God will reveal that with time. But you will know when you see that repentant heart. You'll know that when you, when you, when you receive uh, 
you know, when they speak with a repentant heart, when they speak about what they've done to you, when they, they really apologize, you'll know. You will know when there's sincerity there. You'll know. The Holy Spirit will move on you. And so, of course, the Holy Spirit, these people cannot receive Christ until they repent. They have to repent. And remember, repentance is of God. No one can decide, oh, I want to repent. God is the one that gives us a heart of contrition, a contrite heart. God is the one that empowers us to want to repent. God is the one that convicts us. They, and you remember, no one goes to the Father but through the Son. So it's Jesus Christ. It's the working of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit within us. And so you can see that the Holy Spirit is not working within these people. But you will know if he does begin to. But it's going to require for them to change their mind about what they think and believe. So continue to pray. Continue in spiritual warfare, covering your loved ones. Continue to protect your people. It is your job to protect your people because you are the believer in this, right? So you need to practice spiritual warfare. Um, Robert Clancy is a pastor on YouTube. He has many spiritual warfare and deliverance videos. They're wonderful. And there are um, many, many videos on on YouTube about deliverance, but practice spiritual warfare in the secret place. You know, get up at midnight, get up at 3 a.m. and battle in the spirit because they're feeling it. These people are feeling it now. They know one with God is majority. Remember, my brother and sister, just because you've grown immune to the venom does not mean you should play with snakes. Do not play with snakes. This has been Promised Land Proclamations with Daughter of Judah. Have a wonderful rest of your day, my brother, my sister. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.